Hi, I'm Dr. Bertolo Meshko, the medical futurist, and today I want to talk about a question you might not have thought about before, but it's worth asking. In today's world, where healthcare systems are often struggling, if not outright crumbling, big tech puts a price tag on our data, and there is a thriving black market for human organs out there. So, how much is life actually worth? The world is a giant supermarket. Everything is up for sale and everything has a price tag. A carton of milk, three bucks. A rare butterfly on eBay, about 200. You can even buy an acre on the surface of the moon for about 50 bucks. And like everything else, your life, your health, and even your organs have price tags too. But how do we measure what a life is worth? The average American household spent almost $5,000 per person on healthcare last year. That price increased more than 100% over the past three decades, but the main driver of the increase is not drug costs or medical services. In fact, the costs related to medical services have decreased by about a third in the past 30 years. The biggest reason for the increase is insurance costs. Out of that 5,000 bucks, the average American paid about $3,500 each year for insurance alone. So that's the insurer's way of measuring the worth of our lives. In America, counting with an average life expectancy of 78 years, that's a bit more than a quarter million dollars per person. But is that the actual price tag for a life? Or is that just the price of American healthcare? Uh, here's a radical idea. The function of healthcare should be to provide quality care to every man, woman, and child as a right not to make tens of billions in profits for the insurance companies and the drug companies. Ideally, medication, especially life-saving drugs, should be available to everyone in need. In an ideal utopian world, the means of healing people, the instruments for alleviating pain and suffering, the assets to save lives, wouldn't cost a penny. When inventor Frederick Benting discovered insulin in 1923, he refused to put his name on the patent. He felt it was unethical for a doctor to profit from a discovery that would save lives. Benting's co-inventors decided to sell the insulin patent for only a dollar. They wanted everyone who needed their medication to be able to afford it. They would definitely spin in their graves if they seen the price tags on their discovery today. The price of insulin, a life-saving drug for diabetics, tripled between 2002 and 2013. Since 2008, three top manufacturers raised the list price of insulin at least 10 times. The annual costs of insulin and supplies are about $6,000 today, and costs continue to rise, and so much so that Many, as many as one in four people with diabetes are now skimping on or outright skipping life-saving doses. But price gouging goes way beyond diabetes treatment. For rare diseases and small patient pools, the price of life gets extremely high. When Turing Pharmaceuticals raised the price of Daraprim to $750 per tablet last month, the average cost of treatment for patients rose from about $1,130 to $63,000. For certain patients, the cost can run as high as $634,000. Many shall remember ill-famed Martin Shkreli and the outrage he caused when he raised the price of Daraprim, a drug that treats the parasitic infection called toxoplasmosis and is used in some cases to treat cancer and AIDS. Daraprim should be taken once or twice daily, and a Bloomberg reporter suggested that a pill of Daraprim probably costs around $1 to make. But Shkreli used his monopoly position for treating toxoplasmosis, raised the price 5,000%, which means if you want to be treated for that particular disease, it costs you $1,500 every single day. For people with toxoplasmosis, that's the price of life. Fortunately, governmental regulation started to take note and act on it. Members of Congress have been pressuring drug companies and pharmacy benefit managers to bring insulin costs under control. And as for Shkreli, the so-called pharma bro has been sentenced to seven years in prison. Martin Shkreli is a former pharmaceutical executive who was convicted of defrauding investors. But he made headlines for hiking the price of the life-saving drug Daraprim. Let's just say we will see how much of a pharma bro he will be behind bars. However, the problem is not just the price gouging of drugs, such as insulin or Daraprim, but also the incredibly high prices of new therapies 
and treatment options for rare diseases. In 2019, the FDA approved the most expensive drug on the market to date, gene therapy for rare childhood disease spinal muscular atrophy SMA. The experimental therapy means infusing the patient with genetically modified viruses carrying healthy copies of the gene they need. Currently, there is no other cure for the illness and the condition progresses very fast. Babies with SMA usually don't live past their second birthday. The price of that treatment is more than $2 million. But who decides what the price of life is? The pricing of medication and therapies are often way too complex and sometimes, as in the cases of insulin and Duraprim, it seems way too arbitrary. Experts say now that cheaper generic drugs account for about 90% of all prescriptions filled in the United States. Pharma companies are turning to rare disease treatments and gene therapies as their next profit engine, with major companies like Pfizer and Novartis investing in drugs for tiny pools of patients. When asked about fair pricing on drugs, Samia Hurst, bioethicist, said that making a profit from production is the only way for companies uh, can make a normal level of profit over the long run. Matt Swolinski, a political philosopher, argues that those high prices are not only necessary to recoup the cost spent researching and developing that drug, but also the hundreds of other drugs that never made it to the market. And if you compare personalized therapies with genetic solutions that were used up until now, their advantage is crystal clear. On the one hand, they offer an efficient solution and heal patients from diseases that were untreatable before. And on the other hand, they are much more cost-efficient in the long run when looking at the entire society. Thus, the development of personalized treatment solutions is definitely the way forward, although companies should come up with better options for payment. But ultimately, the human rights guidelines for pharmaceutical companies specify that companies must do all they reasonably can to ensure that medicines are available in sufficient quantities in the countries where they are needed. They also suggest that companies are obligated to contribute to the development of drugs for neglected diseases. So companies must make sure that drugs they produce are accessible to all patient groups, not just rich patients or those in developed countries driving others to desperate solutions such as crowdfunding or not going to the hospital for treatment at all. Only then could gene therapies and other revolutionary healing methods fulfill their potential in making patients' lives better. So, as you can see, from the healthcare standpoint, the price of life differs by each case. And in theory, life is priceless. In reality, if you look at you as the sum of your body parts, you could be worth at least half a million dollars, all the way up to a solid 45 million bucks, depending on a bunch of factors. If you're looking at legal ways to sell your organs, a few key body parts drive up the price. Your heart in the US will be worth about $1 million, livers come in second, worth close to 600000 the kidneys cost close to $300,000, a human skin is worth $10 per inch, while the stomach would be 500 bucks and their eyeball would be about $1,500 each. Not surprisingly, organs are offered for way less on the black market, about 10% of the legal prices, but you never know where those body parts come from. Still, demand is huge, so the black market for organs is flourishing. And until technology like 3D bioprinting doesn't offer a viable solution for organ donation, it will remain that way. In theory, if bioprinting becomes a cheap and mainstream method, and you can print out organs based on your own stem cells, there will be no reason for the black market to exist. And with that, we arrived where the real price of life can be found. It's not the price tag the healthcare systems put on you, it's not the sum of the value of your organs, it's your raw data. If you're looking at only the pharma industry and the electronic medical health records, it's about 66 to 67 billion dollar industry. Already, Drug makers are buying access to datasets from DNA testing companies like 23andMe that created one of the world's largest genetic databases. Their database is anonymized, meaning that identifying particulars are removed from the data, if that's possible. But once patients give their consent to such companies to identify their individual data, these databases could be worth two to four times as much as in anonymized form. Of course, I'm not talking about all this as a money-making opportunity. I have to emphasize that because each time I'm talking about topics like this, I get two dozen emails from people who want to sell me their kidneys. I'm talking about this because 
in the changing landscape of healthcare, where patients will become the point of care with digital health technologies, our medical records, or genome sequencing data, or the information your health records and variables provide all represent a huge value. And in this new age of digital health, you are not just responsible for managing your health, but you have responsibility to protect your data and the value you are representing. Maybe if you know about these issues more, we have a better chance for that. If you like this video, please subscribe down here. Thank you.